So I want to just go over the basic, basic features of this camper. So it's a Micro Bonaire camper, 1300 is the model, and it's been converted into a tiny house of approximately 60 square feet. And despite the addition of a tile kitchen, full working bathroom, solar charged battery system, and basically all the comforts of a modern house, it still only tips the scale about one ton. With modern LED lighting and a high efficiency refrigerator, this tiny house is able to use a single deep cycle 12 volt battery and a 160 watt solar panel. Um, the battery itself is a 100 amp group 31 deep cycle. Um, the dimensions of the camper, the outside dimensions are 13 feet long by 6 feet, 7.5 feet wide. Um, let's see, the interior space is about 60 square feet. And let's see, the, um, the solar panel is made by EcoWorthy and rate, is rated at 160 watts. The battery is a deep cycle lead acid battery system. It also has a 120 volt plug on the front to connect to shore power. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I wanted to uh, mention that the paint that I used was recycled paint, uh, which is really cool. In um, Burlington, they um, the Chittenden County Waste Department recycles the paint and then they sell it. I bought it at a store called Resource, which is a secondhand building supply store. So that was really cool. The exterior paint of the camper is from Sherwin-Williams. Uh, I don't remember the exact uh, type. I, it's exterior paint, but um, they had a, a ton of color selections, which was really fun to look through. Um, and the toilet, which is in here, which you can't see because now the, the closet is in the way. Um, I'm using uh, compostable bags. So, I mean, I've, I think I've double layered it just in case, but I didn't want to use regular plastic. So it makes me feel a little better um, if I do use the toilet that it could potentially be composted because um, I've got the cedar chips and the pine chips in there as well. The um, shoe rack I never showed, the shoe shelf comes out so that I have room for larger boots. Oh yeah, so I guess tomorrow I'm going to be vending at Cafe Fina and I will um, take a video of all the art that I'm selling and I want to just, you know, Eventually, like I said, I want to include more artists, more local artists. Um, I have friends who do art, so I want to get their art in my boutique. And I just want to start making it more of a community thing. Um, and uh, it's just been a, just a really exciting and uh, fun um, adventure starting the business doing this uh, camper project, um, coming into a new lifestyle that just feels more fluid, more connected with other people, uh, more creative. And, um, but it hasn't always been, it's not, it hasn't been easy. Like I, I just, I mean, I, I've gotten to a place now where it feels like things are pretty, pretty feeling more grounded, but you know, there was, um, a lot leading up to this, you know, to this moment and um, a lot of reflection, a lot of kind of having to, you know, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of having, to, you know, a lot of trust in myself because, I, you know, you're doing, doing something completely different <laughs> than what most people are doing and there's not a lot of examples out there and, you know, and you sometimes feel like, you know, wait, what, you know, what am I doing here? Is this, um, you know, is this going to work? But what I find is that the more you, um, really just trust your intuition and your instincts and just keep following, um, what feels good and what feels good to you, 
um, things just unfold in a way that is just um, kind of magical and so there's hard times there's there's you know struggles you know there was a lot of internal struggles going on as I was doing this but I felt that I was following something that was real to me and important and meaningful and no matter what happens I feel like I'm in a good good spot so I think that's just a really good lesson um, that I took from it um, the whole experience is um, you kind of when you take steps towards what feels good to you it your life just kind of um, you know it, it might not be exactly what you think in your head it's gonna be but it's exactly where you need to be and it will bring you to a new place so um, I think that's everything I can't think of anything else at this point um, oh I think the storage in the front put my camera here so you can kind of see it um, I think I said oh yeah there's jack stands in there there's some extra tools there's my blocks um, to support the tongue of the camper um, so it's just really great to have the extra storage I just again want to um, give a shout out to Andrew Martinson who helped me um, with the camper and got me on the road before it got too cold in Vermont and um, and to my friends in Santa Fe and just um, everybody who supported my GoFundMe campaign, which is still up. Um, if people feel inclined to support this venture because I still need support in getting the business started. Um, I'm here in Santa Fe for a while and um, gonna be experimenting with different places, different venues, different events. Um, and just getting the message of hope and um, this whimsical uh, lifestyle, <laughs> getting my story out there to people. Um, it's already been really, really fun and fulfilling to meet people and to connect with people while doing this. And um, I'm just really excited to get to know more people in Santa Fe and around New Mexico. And um, thank you for watching. I, I wish you all the best on your journeys and hope to connect in the future. All right. Have an awesome day. So for those of you wondering how I towed the camper with my 2014 Subaru Forester, the only way it was possible, I mean the Subaru has a lot of power, but the only way that made it uh, truly possible was that I had I had a, a manual brake system added on to the camper and um, you know, tied into the car. So I'm just going to read this information here so that I can explain it better. Um, so my camper is equipped with an electric brake assist system. Coupled with a brake controller in the car, the brakes will automatically come on when you press the brake pedal. You can also activate the, activate the brakes manually separate from the car brakes by pressing the controller button. The amount you press the controller button indicates the force of the trailer brakes. And um, so anyway, that's what I ended up using uh, when I was traveling from Vermont down to Florida to Santa Fe. Um, there were times when I was going down a steep, steep hills and um, or when it was really windy or when big trucks were passing, I had the manual brake controller set so that um, when I pressed the brakes on the car, it would pull back, you know, the camper and slow the camper down. And that's really what um, allowed me to tow it so easily. Um, without being in danger, <laughs> you know, going down steep hills and things like that. Because otherwise, um, the camper weight is sort of close in uh, weight to the car. And so um, when you have like a bigger vehicle, like a truck, it's not a big deal. But like, you know, with a Subaru, like I said, even though it, it can tow it, it's a lot of force, a lot of power. Um, if I'm going down a hill, for instance, if I don't have the manual brake controller, potentially could swing around um, and push the car you know faster than I want to go so anyway 
that's um, just an additional information um, if you're planning to look into um, towing a, your own camper um, you want to get a vehicle uh, that is rated for the weight of what you're towing and that a manual brake controller is super helpful if your camper doesn't already have it connected um, definitely worth adding it on so that you can be safe all right here it is a close-up of the solar charge controller you can see the solar panel is putting energy into the battery and the battery is putting energy into the electrical devices like my refrigerator and my lights and any other appliances that I use and if I ever use like a regular household appliance a 110 I have to turn on the I press this button and I turn on the inverter and that lets me use those outlets or use those appliances that I would use in a normal house and um, my gosh I think that I've covered everything that I can think of um, it's a 1986 micro Bonaire 1300 camper and uh, when I got it um, it was in really really good shape but I did put sealant on the sides like on the corners on the outside and I resealed the roof and I'm probably gonna have to continue doing that to make sure that the structure stay sound so that I can keep enjoying this beautiful tiny home on the inside and one other thing is a tile I did order on Amazon but the tile that doesn't have cute little prints on it is um, also from resource um, I um, got a lot of my supplies a lot of what you see in the camper secondhand at resource, restore, Habitat for Humanity, um, Goodwill, Replays, and um, and other places uh, in Vermont when I was treasure hunting. And um, I'm just so excited that I got to share this whole camper with you. Um, I think at this point the video is like an hour long so I'm gonna see about getting some help editing and putting it together um, so that it's uh, easy to watch it's a little shorter and um, I hope that everyone enjoys it and you can leave comments you can find me at wildcat sister on Facebook and Instagram and you can visit me and if you're in Santa Fe I will be vending various places and I will post where I am so you can follow me and um, cheers okay so a few more stats here the Norcold refrigerator draws about three to four amps when operating and will run about five to six hours each day depending on the temperature setting and heat inside the camper 4 amps times 5 hours equals 20 amp hour consumed each day. And I'm going to talk about the solar charge controller. It's an MPP Trace Solar Charge Controller. Um, it's a high efficiency MPPT controller. It takes the 12 to 19 volts generated by the solar panel and converts them to the best voltage needed to charge the battery. Okay, real quick, I also wanted to um, give a shout out to all my friends, uh, not just in Santa Fe, in Vermont, who um, believed in me from the very beginning and um, helped me get this project going, get my boutique going, who spent time listening to my... Um, Oh, just everything I was going through, you know, just being there for me. And um, so just my friends in general. Um, I didn't want to exclude my friends in Vermont and um, other places in New York and um, in North Carolina and uh, family members. Anyway, um, just have a lot of gratitude for, for all the support I've gotten and from all my friends.